الماي المودة والصباح Good afternoon. You're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nelfel, and these are today's top stories. Lebanese authorities begin installing additional ultrasonic bird repellers at the Beirut airport to drive birds away after the Costa Brava landfill brings incidents. After a four-day trip to Saudi Arabia and Qatar, President Michel Aoun and the accompanying delegation of ministers return back to Lebanon after a successful run. And U.S. President-elect Donald Trump says he plans on repealing and replacing Obama's signature health care as soon as the Secretary of Health and Human Services is confirmed. Lebanese authorities are beginning to install additional ultrasonic bird repellers at the Beirut airport to drive birds away. Public Works Minister Youssef Fignano said that the Civil Aviation Authority kick-started the work in the early hours of the morning. The development comes as seagulls attracted to the waste in the Costa Brava landfill became a danger to airborne planes at the nearby Rafi Hariri International Airport. A source at the airport told the Daily Star newspaper that there are currently only two devices installed and the number will increase to 14 when the process is completed. The devices are being installed on eastern and western runways and around the airport's parameter. The safety of flights in and out of Lebanon has been increased after multiple sources confirmed instances of birds hitting planes during takeoff. Prime Minister Saad Hariri had ordered the immediate installation of additional ultrasonic bird repellers at the Rafi Hariri International Airport yesterday. After a four-day trip to Saudi Arabia and Qatar, President Michel Aoun and the accompanying delegation of ministers have returned back to Lebanon. Upon his return, Aoun stressed that ties with the Gulf countries, particularly with Saudi Arabia, are back to normal, adding that the misunderstanding is over and a new leaf of relations has begun. The Lebanese will witness an increase in the influx of Gulf tourists to Lebanon, he said, and he hailed the Lebanese community in the Gulf and, quote, said, during our trip, we have sensed a huge respect and appreciation for the Lebanese who have helped with the developmental renaissance in Gulf countries. On the topics discussed with Gulf officials, he said all subjects of common interest raised during the tour have received a positive response and clear support. The agreements will be followed up in mutual visits. Syrian government airstrikes killed at least six civilians, including four children, in Aleppo province despite a fragile two-week-old truce. In neighboring Idlib province, at least 22 jihadists were killed in airstrikes over the past 24 hours, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Some were carried out by government aircraft, others by aircraft of the U.S.-led coalition, the Britain-based monitoring group. The civilians were killed when a government airstrike hit a house in the village of Babka in the west of Aleppo. It said the death toll could rise because a number of the wounded were in serious condition. Most of the dead in the Idlib strikes were fighters of the former Al-Qaeda affiliate Fatah Shah. Coming up next, more world headlines when we return. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Iraqi forces drove back ISIS militants in southeastern Mosul, making gains in an area where advances have been particularly tough, according to the military. Rapid response units from Iraq's federal police advanced in the Sumer district, which lies on the eastern bank of the Tigris River and also in neighboring Sahirun. Forces have pressed forward much more slowly in the area than the units in the east and northeast who have taken control of a number of neighborhoods in the past week. The Army's elite counterterrorism service has spearheaded advances in eastern Mosul. The U.S.-backed campaign to recapture ISIS's last major stronghold in Iraq has pushed ahead with renewed vigor since the turn of the year after troops got bogged down inside the city in November and December. A car bombing in southern Yemen claimed by al-Qaeda seriously wounded a senior security official and killed one of his guards, a security source is saying. Four other guards were wounded in the attack on the convoy of the head of security services in the town of Ladr in Abyan province. Now, the Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, known as a QAP, 
seen by Washington as the jihadist network's most dangerous franchise, claim responsibility. The U.S.-based watchdog site Intelligent Group said that Al-Qaeda and the rival Islamic State group have exploited a power vacuum created by the conflict between the government and the Houthis to expand their presence. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump says that he plans on repealing and replacing President Obama's signature health care legislation as soon as the Secretary of Health and Human Services is confirmed. Trump said that he doesn't want to own the health care legislation politically, telling reporters at his first news conference as president-elect that he thought about sitting back and letting the Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, sit in place through 2017 when he claims it would eventually implode. We don't want to own it politically. They own it right now. So the easiest thing would be to let it implode in 17, and believe me, we'd get pretty much whatever we wanted, but it would take a long time. We're going to be submitting, as soon as our secretary is approved, almost simultaneously, shortly thereafter, a plan. It'll be repeal and replace. It will be essentially simultaneously. Obamacare is the Democrats' problem. We are going to take the problem off the shelves for them. We're doing them a tremendous service by doing it. We could sit back and let them hang with it. We are doing the Democrats a great service. What really is happening is the word is now out that when you want to move your plant to Mexico or some other place and you want to fire all of your workers from Michigan and Ohio and all these places that I won for good reason, it's not going to happen that way anymore. You want to move your plant and you think, as an example, you're going to build that plant in Mexico and you're going to make your air conditioners or your cars or whatever you're making and you're going to sell it through a, what will be a very, very strong border not a weak border like it is, we don't even have a border, it's an open sieve. But you're going to sell through a very strong border, not going to happen. You're going to pay a very large border tax. So if you want to move to another country, and if you want to fire all of our great American workers that got you there in the first place, you can move from Michigan to Tennessee and to North Carolina and South Carolina. You can move from South Carolina back to Michigan. You can do anywhere. You've got a lot of states at play. A lot of competition. So it's not like, oh gee, I'm taking the competition. We've got a lot of places you can move. And I don't care as long as it's within the United States, the borders of the United States. There will be a major border tax on these companies that are leaving going to build a wall. I could wait about a year and a half until we finish our negotiations with Mexico, which will start immediately after we get to office, but I don't want to wait. Uh, Mike Pence is leading an effort to get final approvals through various agencies and through Congress for the wall to begin. I don't feel like waiting a year or a year and a half. We're going to start building. Mexico, in some form, and there are many different forms, will reimburse us, and they will reimburse us for the cost of the wall. U.S. President Barack Obama addressed his country and the world for the final time as president in an emotional speech that listed the landmark achievements of his presidency and stressed unity as a nation. Capping his eight years in the White House, Obama returned to his adoptive hometown of Chicago to recast his Yes We Can campaign credo as Yes We Did. Here are the best parts and the highlights of his speech. All right, everybody sit down. We're on live TV here. I gotta, I gotta move. I can't do that. <laughs> but the long sweep of America has been defined by forward motion, a constant widening of our founding creed to embrace all and not just some. If every economic issue is framed as a struggle between a hardworking white middle class and an undeserving minority, then workers of all shades are going to be left fighting for scraps while the wealthy withdraw further into their private enclaves. If we're unwilling to invest in the children of immigrants just because they don't look like us, we will diminish the prospects of our own children because 
those brown kids will represent a larger and larger share of America's workforce. Our Constitution is a remarkable, beautiful gift. But it's really just a piece of parchment. It has no power on its own. We, the people, give it power. We, the people, give it meaning with our participation and with the choices that we make. So you see, that's what our democracy demands. It needs you. Not just when there's an election, not just when your own narrow interest is at stake, but over the full span of a lifetime. If you're tired of arguing with strangers on the internet, try talking with one of them in real life. It has been the honor of my life to serve you. I won't stop. In fact, I will be right there with you as a citizen for all my remaining days. But for now, whether you are young or whether you're young at heart, I do have one final ask of you as your president. The same thing I asked when you took a chance on me eight years ago. I'm asking you to believe, not in my ability to bring about change, but in yours. Yes, we can. Yes, we did. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Lebanese, oh, that ends our bulletin for today. Now, a reminder of our headlines. Lebanese authorities begin installing additional ultrasonic bird repellers at the Beirut airport to drive birds away after the Costa Brava landfill incident nearby. After a four-day trip to Saudi Arabia in Qatar, President Michel Aoun and the accompanying delegation of ministers return back to Lebanon after a successful run. And U.S. President-elect Donald Trump says he plans to repeal and replace President Obama's signature health care legislation as soon as the Secretary of Health and Human Services is confirmed. Those are your Thursday headlines live on Future Television. I'm Nina Nelfa, wishing you all a good night. Take care.